Archbishop Conti, in your time as Archbishop of Glasgow, you've seen some changes in the profile of St Mungo's Day and the celebration of St Mungo. Can you talk us through some of those developments? Happily, I came to Glasgow uh, ten years ago nearly, on the day following the feast of St Mungo. I was very much aware that Mungo and his uh, settlement had been the origins of the city of Glasgow. And I remember wanting to come off the motorway to go and perhaps kneel at his tomb uh, by way of getting some support, as it were, for my own ministry. But wisely, I decided there was hardly time for that. But from the very beginning, therefore, I was wanting to do something to make St. Mungo better known within both the Catholic community or celebrated more there and within the general community. And indeed, I had some encouragement because the following year was one of the years that was marked as possibly the date of his death. Um, and so that year, there were a number of events, one thing leading to another, engagement with the minister of St. Mungo's Cathedral and with the new minister who, who, who took his place, namely the present minister, my very good friend, Lawrence Whitley, suggesting to him it might be an appropriate occasion for us from our various churches to get together in the mother church of the city, and he responding to that very generously, um, asking someone to look to the ancient uh, texts of the feast, which I did in the case of Father Jerry Byrne, who during my time I had the privilege of ordaining, and was very interested in, uh, in plain chant and the texts of the ancient feasts. But we already had in place, of course, the St. Mungo singers who sang at my installation as Archbishop and who have done the same on all great occasions of the Church over these years. And I think under Monsignor Fitzpatrick they were raring to go, so they have responded to every such occasion. And he himself has presented the St. Mungo cantata. Um, as I say, one thing has led to another. But when the city realized that we were together, ecumenically that is, doing something to recall St. Mungo, to celebrate his feast, the city came in and gave, it, gave us its support. And so now on St. Mungo's day, or a day just prior to the feast, we have an event which is marked also by the presence of civic and um, other leaders within the community. Some people might see the celebration of a saint's feast day as something that comes very natural, naturally within the Catholic Church. Um, but recent developments have seen a strong ecumenical approach. Has Mungo become a kind of unifying force? I think it has become a unifying force. It's given us the opportunity to work together. But St Mungo, after all, is the founding father of the city and there are plenty of uh, statues of him, references to him throughout the city. So it has become very natural to extend what was known about him already and, the, and his public persona as represented by these statues now being celebrated with liturgies and song and, and talks and dance and whatever.
Now, you'll be presiding, as usual, at uh, the Mass of St Mungo on his feast day in St Mungo's Church in Townhead. This will be your tenth such occasion. And what do you look forward to every year when you, when you prepare for that Mass? It's given me an opportunity to, to look back over the year and to look ahead as well. It's a moment in my life as an Archbishop uh, to recall for myself and hopefully for members of the Archdiocese what is a church we've managed to achieve during the course of the year. Um, and it has always uh, provided, I think, some encouragement uh, particularly when we've looked at the ecumenical engagements, which the years have uh, constantly brought forth. Music has been very much a constant feature of the Mungo celebrations over the years. Are there any particular pieces that, that come to mind when you, you think of celebrating the Saints' Feast Day? Well, that Glasgow Flourish is the very uh, first one to come to mind. And... Uh, having sung it last night uh, in St. Mungo's Cathedral um, with the support of, uh, of a band from the Salvation Army and the St. Mungo's Singers and so on, and giving it great, uh, what shall we say, voice, it certainly raised the roof. And in, involving children has also been something you've been keen to, to promote, hasn't it? Very much so, but there I'm only encouraging what has already been taking place, particularly, again, through Monsignor Fitzpatrick's good work in that area. And children love to, to, to sing songs. Uh, there have been songs, uh, especially, um, there have been songs especially created for them. Um, and they've been very delightful. They dressed up and played parts and, and uh, in St Mungo's Church in Hill, in Townhead, have uh, demonstrated their enjoyment. And looking to the future, what would be your hopes for future developments in this Mungo Festival and the celebration of this saint who founded Glasgow? Well, there are certain areas where already there are signs of development, and that is perhaps in the literary field. Now, with the copy of the work of, of the abbot of Furness, uh, um, 
writing the life which the minister of the cathedral and I have been reading passages from on each of these festivals, I in Latin and he in, in English, um, songs, further songs being composed, um, dance becoming a feature too of the annual event. Um, I'm to give a talk, a lecture in the first of what's going to be called the Molendina Lectures, all of that shows a natural progression, I think, into the arts, which from the very beginning have been a feature of the festival, as one would expect. We are the